Welcome to the Lord's house this morning. We're so happy that you're with us. The Lord has been good to us this year, hasn't he? Amen. No wonder we're tired when we look at all we did. Amen. I was visiting on a family, and uh, they have a little girl, and as they came to the egg drop, and her daddy says every time she sees a helicopter, she points her finger at him and says, eggs are supposed to drop eggs from the helicopter. Amen. Well, good morning. Thank you for the music, the songs. Thank you for your presence this morning. We're certainly glad that you're here with us in the Lord's house and sharing this Lord's day. We're happy that you're here. We're going to the book of Psalms this morning, Psalms 100, if you'll join us there. In just a minute, we'll make our way there in our reading of the scripture. Psalms 100 in your Bibles this morning, Psalms 100. Well, as we think about this Thanksgiving week, we go back to our our history of who we are as a country and as a nation. You know, I'm glad to be an American, aren't you? Amen. I said, I'm glad to be an American, aren't you? Amen. Yeah. We've got plenty of problems, but, but we've got a great foundation. As you know, the history in 1621, a small band of pilgrims left Britain and made their way over to establish an independent colony in our country. There's a lot of hardship in the first year. They started out with 102 before the year was over with. They only had 47 people that were still left alive. Very difficult time. In 1623, Governor Bradford was a governor of that time in our American history. In the journey over here, uh, he lost his wife. She drowned in the journey making it to America. But it was interesting that he issued a proclamation establishing that there will be a day of thanksgiving, a thanksgiving day unto the Lord. There's a big difference of being having a good attitude of gratitude and then being thankful to the Lord. Can you say amen with me? Separate that in your mind. And he made this proclamation, and I want to take just a moment to read it to you and share it with you. So this is Governor Bradford, 1623, proclamation. Inasmuch as a great father and God has given us, this year, an abundant harvest of Indian corn, wheat, peas, squashes, and garden vegetables, and, uh, and has made the forest to be filled with game, and the sea uh, with fish and clams, and insomuch as he has pr protected us from the savage of the land, has spared us from pestilence and disease, and has granted us freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our own hearts. Interesting. So we make a proclamation on November the 25th, 1623, that that day would be set aside, as he said, the rendering of thanksgiving to the Almighty God for all the blessings on this colony. Very interesting, isn't it? It was interesting that he established. Then Abraham Lincoln in 1863, 200 years later, made a decree that it would be a national holiday of thanksgiving on the fourth, every fourth Tuesday of the, of the month of November. And then President Roosevelt, I haven't read the history of why, but he changed it to Thursday, and every fourth Thursday of November would be a day of thanksgiving as unto the Lord. Amen. And so that's why we're here. Amen. As we think about thanksgiving, if I give you a title to my message, this morning it'd be just simple. How, how, how can we become thankful? How should we become thankful? thankful to the Lord. How should we do that? What does that mean? What's that all about? Um, as we think about that, we'd have to ask ourselves, when are we to be thankful? Is it that fourth Thursday of November, or is it yesterday and today and tomorrow? And that's what we agree, amen? That Thanksgiving is something, my friend, that all of us need to share and have as a piece and a part of our life. So we're going to read the scripture. Would you stand with us as we look to the word of the Lord? Book of Psalms 100, it's a very short psalm, just five verses that are packed with a whole lot. Here's what it says. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving and into the courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Let's make a word of prayer. Our Father, how could we even read this text without saying thank you for all you are and all you do? Now, Lord, bless, I would pray, 
your word and the truth of it this day to our hearts and our lives. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. And amen. Thank you. Be seated. You know, I think it could become very easy to become a person that's grumpy and grouchy. Sometimes we just run into those people. I don't like to stay around them any longer than I need to, but they're all there. Did you hear the story about a man that went into the butcher shop to buy some meat? He was standing in line, and all of a sudden someone opened the door, and a big, large dog walked into the meat market. dog said, as he was, had a big purse in his mouth, and uh, the tenant there at the counter said to, to the dog, he said, I see you're back today, buddy. And he said, woof. He said, you need some meat today? And the dog said, woof. He said, do you want chicken or do you want beef? And he said, woof. And he said, do you want a half pound or a pound? And he said, woof. And so sure enough, the, the man attending the meat market prepared the meat, took the purse, took the money out of the purse and put the money, excuse me, the meat carefully there back into the person away the dog went. The man that was a spectator in the meat market that day wanted to, you know, he'd never seen an animal so intelligent as this that could come to the meat market, buy what the master asked him to buy, and then take it back home. He said, I want to follow this dog, and I want to see, I want to see what this guy is all about. So sure enough, he started following the dog. A couple blocks away, he turned into an apartment complex, up a couple flights of stairs, went to a certain door, and sat there for just a minute. The spectator standing behind watching the dog. All of a sudden, after waiting a while, nobody come to the door, and he scratched on the door. And the man that owned the dog came to the door, and the man began to yell at the dog. And the spectator said, hold it, hold it, hold it. I have never seen such an intelligent animal in all of my life. I've never seen anything like it. He goes to the meat market, orders, and buys, and gets, and brings back, and you're scolding and yelling at this dog. Why are you yelling at this dog? And the owner said, well, the last three times I've sent him out, he's forgot the key. That's why I'm yelling at this dog, you know. There's always reasons to be grumpy and grouchy and unthankful, isn't there? You don't have to look very far. You don't have to look very far. Very easy to become that way. If you think about, if you want to know how to be unhappy, here's the way you do it. Let me give you a simple remedy. If you compare what you have to what you want, you'll find yourself immediately unhappy. But if you compare, my friend, what you have to what you deserve, you'll find yourself be happy. So how is it an unhappy person can become happy? Talks about the great downfall of the humanity and what a person does to get away from the Lord. It becomes very clear, it said in the Romans chapter number one, that they became unthankful. They knew God, they didn't glorify him as God, and they became unthankful. Thankful. That was a part of the broken nature of man, and it takes us and he makes us unthankful. I want to give you just three simple thoughts as we make our way into this message this morning. I want to talk about how to be thankful. First of all, I say if you're going to have to be, if you're going to learn how to be thankful, then you can't look down too long. You can't look down too much. You know, there's a lot of ways to look. That's just one of them. But one thing needs to be sure that you can't look down too long. I've seen by accident this week a picture of Ray Brandt, a large picture of him, and uh, I got thinking about the picture, and I'm not one that follows a lot of art. I'm just glad that the Lord gives us the originals, and uh, others transpose them and put on print or canvas or whatever they do, and I'm grateful for beauty and joy and all that, but I'm not one that really follows or would collect a lot of pictures. I'm kind of a firm believer that a picture is really not that much value unless it has a person in it. That's just a crazy little dude of mine in my head, but it was interesting as I began to think about that picture after I left that picture. I thought, you know, can you imagine uh, a little ant walking across this very expensive painting by a very qualified um, artist? Can you imagine him? This particular painting that I seen by Ray Brandt, Ray Brandt was very interesting because it had a lot of dark black down. Almost all of the back, my friend, of this painting was dark, dark, deep, dark, dark brown. Can you imagine if that ant started his way across that painting as he was looking down? If that was all he could see, you know, when you're not very far off the ground, you can't see very far ahead. You know what I'm trying to say? Some of you folk won't understand that, but under, short people understand that real quick. Amen? Uh, but it's interesting, if you're that little ant crawling across, you come to that big brown portion of that portrait, and you say, man, this is very deep, this is dark, this is brown, and, and you start walking across that, you become very depressed if all you were looking at is looking at down and seeing the dark colors. 
But in this particular painting that he made, there was a man and there was a young man that was kneeling in front of him and some other people in the crowd. And as you see, that little ant makes its way and it progresses its way and comes to the different colors of the clothing of the people. You see that the whole temperature of that ant would change because now he's seeing not brown in the darkness, but he's now seeing the greens and he's seeing the reds, he's seeing the yellow, he's seeing the human, he's seeing the people. Sometimes, my friend, I believe that, my friend, we literally look down too much. We come to a place that that's all that we do. You know, you don't have to look very far if you're looking down to see a lot of sadness in life. This has been a very blessed year, but it's been a very difficult year in our church family. And if you stay looking down too long, you would become unhappy. You'd become unthankful. And it'd be easy to do that because once you get looking down, there's a, there's a lot to see when you're looking down. And so many of us, my friend, if we're not careful, we'll be looking down in our life way too much and all we see is the difficult and the hard times and the things, my friend, that are, that are dark in their colors and, and difficult and bring hurts and bring tears and bring brokenness and sadness in our life. And sometimes they're perpetual. They don't seem to quit. And so many times, my friend, we'll find ourselves being unthankful because that's what we're doing. We're looking down too much. I think there's another direction to look, and I think we ought to look around. I think we ought to look around. Understand with me this morning that our life is a life of moving pictures. I mean, you are not a one slide. You are not in one place. You seem like you're in one place right now, but we're really moving. We have just stopped for just a moment, and our life is going to go on. Our day is going to continue, and we're going to go on. And so is everything about life. Our life is an evolution. It's a evolving, it's a progressing, it's moving on. Can I say there's plenty of places in our life when we are there in that moment, my friend, we could be sad, but if we'll realize that they are a moving picture, there are moving lives, our lives are moving. If you're going to be thankful, you can't look down too long. If you're going to be thankful, you're going to have to realize that your life is moving. A couple of ladies were visiting one of those series of the quilting journeys when they have in uh, they went into one particular shop and one very ac accomplished uh, uh, quilting person was working on a quilt. And uh, after they walked out, one lady said to the other, you know what, I, I was not impressed with a quilt that I seen this qualified person wear. I wasn't impressed at all. And the lead lady said, you know, you weren't impressed because what you were looking at, you were looking at the bottom side of the quilt and that's all you were seeing. All the knots and all the seams and the things at one time was going to be hid and put away. Can I tell you that you and I must realize that, that, my friend, if we'll look down too long, we won't be thankful. But if we're going to be thankful, we've got to realize that we've got to learn to look around, that there's a lot to see. There's a lot of things that God is doing. It's, it's, it's a bigger picture than one, one slide. It's a bigger picture than that moment. It's a bigger picture than one day or one week or one month or one year. Your life is more than that. My life is more than that. It's so much more than that. God wants us to know that our life is moving and our life, my friend, needs to be a life that we are looking around. And sometimes it would be very easy to see the bottom side of the quilt. Sometimes it would be very easy to see, my friend, all the dark colors in life. But our life is filled, my friend, and it's moving. Your life is, is moving and my life is moving. I'm going to read in the book of Daniel, chapter 6. I'll give you a little history here. Darius the king now has taken the kingdom and he's very powerful. And he has more than 100 presidents, and he elects three, and he puts one man in charge of the three presidents, and his name is Daniel, and we know him. And they become very jealous of Daniel, and they seek to try to trap him and find something the matter with him. And they conclude and say, you know what, we're not going to trap this guy, because he's not going to do anything wrong, and he's going to be very upright, he's going to be very honorable, but we can trap him with, with his God. Because we know that every day, three times a day, he'll get on his knees, open the windows towards Jerusalem, and he will pray. They knew that. And so they went to Darius and said, okay, we want you to sign a decree. And we want to bind it with the Medes of the Persians, meaning that when you sign it, that, a, that no one can ever change it. The king, if he signs the decree, he can never change it. And so sure enough, they tricked the king. And now they came back and said, okay, we've got something against now we got something against Daniel. We said for 30 days no one would ask anything of any god except for you. But now Daniel has got down on his knees and he's talked to God and he does it three times a day. You can see him anytime you want to see him. 
because he's going to do it three times every day of his life. And so the judgment would be that he'd be cast in the den of lions, remember? Now, there's a difference between a lion's den and a den of lions, right, amen? I wouldn't mind visiting a lion's den someday, but I don't want to be in the den with the lions when they're there. Are you with me, amen? But it's nonetheless, here it is, so the judgment cannot be changed, and Daniel's going to be cast in a lion's den, and so he did, and so he was. And now we find, I'm going to read just a couple verses here, as Darius now can't sleep in the night, can't wait for morning to come, and he makes his way to the mouth of the, of the den. And I read it to you. And I'm reading it in Daniel um, 6 and 18. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentation voice, Daniel, and the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from thy lions? Is he able, Daniel? Is he, Daniel, is he able? You know, there was plenty of places where Daniel could have become very discouraged if he was looking down. If Daniel wasn't looking around, Daniel could be discouraged. Jairus comes and said, now is he able? The Bible said, then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever, man. My God has sent his angels and has shut the lion's mouth that they have hurt me not, insomuch as before him innocence was found in him, and also before the, O king, have I done no hurt. It's interesting, my friend, that Daniel could praise and thank the Lord simply because he realized that he didn't have to look down all the time. And he realized that he could look around and my friend, that God was at work in his life and there was only a frame, there was only a day and a week and a month and a year, my friend, where things would be as they were. And God would change that if, if, if they would see it. You see, it's interesting, a person that's filled with praise is a person that, my friend, doesn't look at the immediate, but he looks way beyond it. Number one, if you're going to be happy, then the first thing I suggest to you, don't look down too long. Don't look down too long. Some of you are looking down. I'm not talking about now in the service, but now in your life. You're looking down. Well, this has happened, and that's happened, and this is about to happen, and this is not very good, and I don't even know the outcome of this yet, and I'm not sure how this plane is going to land at night, and this is surely going to happen, and you've been looking down way too long. You know why? Because you lost all your joy. Joy is gone. You don't have any joy because you've been looking down. You need to look around and not see the knots and the seams, not see the under of the quilt and see, my friend, that there's going to be a work of God, a plan of God. You know, we're watching happening in our country and in our land and in our Bible era of time, we're watching the turn of God, the turn of God on America. Can you say amen? amen. We're watching the turn of God in America. We're watching it. We believe that Jesus is going to come back before we go into the tribulation. We believe that. But we're just under 70 million babies that we have killed. You and I have been in a generation that killed just under 70 million babies. Hillsborough's almost 10,000 people. Can you imagine how many cities of Hillsborough that we have killed in our land? Think about that. I heard a black commentator say, you know, more than one half of the black people's death. Now listen to this one. This makes my heart cry. More than one half of the black people that die are because of abortion by abortion. But we're watching the turn of America. But can I tell you this? The judgment of America now has began to turn and you were, we're beginning to see it. The, the chastening of the Lord upon a land, on a country. Can I, can I remind you that God is up to something good? Can I remind you that? Can I remind you that, my friend, yes, it's difficult and it can be some dark times, but can I say, and I remind you, my friend, that the God of heaven, the God of heaven's got, got a good plan, he's got a good work that he's doing in America. He will do that. He'll do that in your life and he'll do that in my life. There's always been grace in the time of difficulty, always grace in the time of judgment, but God will do it. You want to know how to be happy? You want to know how to be thankful? Then don't look down too long. Then look around. And then lastly, and here's where my lesson lies, then look up. Look, look up. 
Look up to God. Here's our psalm. Look with us here if you would in our verses. Look up. What should you see when you look up? Verse number three, Psalms 100. If you've got your Bible still open there. Look up, verse number three. Know ye that the Lord is God. Look up and see God. Who is he? It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We must not forget that. Take a big, deep breath someday and say, thank you, Lord, for that good breath of air. Amen. It's not because you made yourself or you're something special, the reason you have it. It's because the God of heaven has given you breath and the ability to breathe. Aren't you glad about that? Amen. God's done that. You look at your home or your car or your truck or all of you've accomplished in your life. And don't say, man, I have done so good. Say, God, you've been so good to me. You want to be thankful, then look up and say, God, he's the one that, he is God, and he's the one that made us and not we ourselves. He's our God. Look up and see that we are his people, it says. Knowing not that the Lord is God, and it's he that hath made us, and not we ourselves, for we are his people. You know what? I become his people. I become one of his the day I trusted him as Savior. No matter how much God loves you, no matter how much God loved me, it took my choice and my decision it was up to me in a time and place in my life to do something and become one of his kids. Amen? I became one of God's kids by choice. I become one of my family's kids, my friend, by the way of birth. But I come by the way of choice. You know, wouldn't it be something if we could choose our brothers and sisters? How many would change some of your order? I won't look. Raise your hand. Amen? I'd like to trade that sister out. I'd like to trade that brother out. Amen? You might be traded out, too. You know, me, maybe me, too. You know, you cannot trade out. You can't pick your brothers and sisters biologically. But you know what? When a person gets saved, you choose your family. You choose your father. You choose your brothers. You choose your sisters. Look up and see that he's God. Look up and see that he made us. Look up and see and look up and know, my friend, that it's not we ourselves. Look up and know that we are his children. Look up and see that we are God's kids. You know, my, my mama was very little, but her eyes, when she'd look at me, if I was always afraid if she'd miss what she'd looking at, she'd start a fire with her eyes. You know what I'm trying to say? You could just read those silent words of that expression of your mother. There's something about that. And I thought she was working on my sisters with her eyes, but I think she's working on me a little bit a few times. You know? It's interesting that it becomes very clear that, my friend, that we are his kids. And God does a work with his kid. Verse number four. Work, verse number four. Then we're invited. When we look up, we're invited enter into his gates. We're invited to come to God's house. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. It's interesting. God said, okay, I'm invited to come and say thank you for what you've done for me. A little boy was visiting with his mother and the, the home that he was in, the little lady said, now, little buddy, would you like an ice cream sandwich? I said, I sure would. Got that ice cream sandwich, he opened up and took a first bite and said, I just want to say thank you. She said, boy, I like to hear little boys say thank you. He said, if you'll give me one more, I'll say thank you again. Amen. <laughs> Can I say that you and I, my friend, ought to enter his courts with praise and thanksgiving. I think there's something about having an attitude of gratitude, but there's something else about coming to a place where you as a people, for me as a person, my friend, we learn to say thanks to God. And then verse number five. Why should we be thankful? How should we be thankful? Verse number five said, For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to generations. Can I say that we're reminded, my friend, that God is good. God is good to you. God is good to me. You say, Pastor, but my life is filled with hurt. Some of that hurt is because of your choice or my choice. Some of that hurt is because of the effect of sin upon your life or my life. Oh, not your individual sin, your personal sin, but the effect of the curse of sin on our lives. You know, there's a lot that happens in life that is just because of the curse. Just because of the curse. God said, okay, I want you to know the Lord is good. He's good. The Lord is good to you. He's good to me. He's good. And his mercy is everlasting. In other words, God doesn't give us what we deserve. God invites us to come and said, okay, I'm going to give you mercy. You're not going to deserve it. I, excuse me, you deserve it, but I'm not going to give it to you. I'm not going to give I'm going to hold back that mercy. He said your, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. So there's a, there's a God in heaven that waits for you and I, and wants for you and I, my friend, to come to a place 
where we've grown and we don't look down so long. That we look over around and see that God has a work that he's going to do. And then we look up and see who he is. And I'll tell you what, that'll make you and bring you to the place of being thankful. Husband and wife have determined that they were going to make a real change in their diet and try to eat real healthy. And uh, so they'd set the date and set the time when that was going to begin. The whole change of the routine and ritual of food and eating and sat down. And the wife prepared a nice meal. It's all set there. And the man looked around and picked up all the lids, you know, and looked and checked everything out. And he said, sweetheart, uh, you better say thanks to the Lord this time because I might, I might be lying and the Lord will know that I'm lying. So you better make the thanks. Can I say that God wants to pick the lid off our hearts and say, okay, now, are you thankful to me? Don't look down too long. Look around and then look up. And I'll tell you what, my friend, once you do that, you stop looking down. You start looking around, realizing that God's plan is not done realizing that God has another plan for you, and then you look up. Man, you look up and see who has brought it, brought it to pass in our lives. We'll say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I want to invite you to stand. Would you stand with me just now? As we now stand to our feet, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and hearts, won't you, for just a minute with you? As we together bow our heads and hearts to the Lord, I would ask you this morning, to ask yourself this question. Have you been looking down too long? Have you been looking down too long? Have you been looking at the world and the troubles and the hurt and the pain and the death and the sadness and the difficult places and the difficult times? Have you been looking down too long? Have you been looking down too long? Number two, I ask you, will you look around today? Will you look around today and see and realize that that God's got a good plan for you. God's got a good work for you. God's got blessings in your life. He's got blessings planned for you. Do you know that he's not done working in your life? He's got good plans for you. He's got a good plan ahead. It's not over. It's not finished. It's not done. God has a big plan yet for you. And then would you look up and see that he's God? the one that created you, that gives you a breath and life, that invites you to come, that he offers to you, he gives to you mercy. He invites you, he wants you to come, wants you to be saved. Now, as you think about that, I ask you about your heart. What is this that God would have you to today? This is our Thanksgiving week, and though nationally, it's our holiday week, but spiritually, might I ask you kindly today to consider to be thankful to God today for all he's done to you, done with you, through you, and for you. Say, oh, Lord, I, I, I look down too long. Lord, I, I need to look around and see what other parts of this plan that you have. Lord, I need to look and see that you're still there and I'm still your sheep. I wonder if today perhaps somebody needs to be saved needs to give the Lord their heart. You know what? Only you could do that for you. Only you can say, I do need to be saved today. I would like to be forgiven today. I'd like to become one of God's children. Maybe there's something that God's put in your heart to do that you need to say yes to the Lord. Say, yes, Lord, I'll be willing to do that. Now, Father in heaven, I pray, Lord, that you'll make clear to the heart of every man, every woman, Lord, their need to be saved if they're not. Lord, I pray, Lord, especially that he that eternal work would happen in the hearts of people. And Lord, that they'd be able to separate knowing that heaven would be their home or, or they'd be forever lost. Dear God, I pray this morning for those of us in the need to change the direction of our look, that Lord, we would change our direction. That we wouldn't look down only, but that we'd look around and we'd look up. Have your way about our looking, and Lord, we'll thank you. Have your way, Lord. Do your work. Might we do ours in this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray and we love you. Amen. As the Lord speaks to you, would you speak to him? Which way do you need to look today? Say yes to the Lord. We'll be about the front if you need to be saved. Be saved today. Say yes to the Lord. Come. Say yes to the Lord. Surely the presence 
of the Lord is in this place. I can see his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the touch of angels' wings. I see glory on his face. Surely the goodness of the Lord is in this place. As the Lord moves, as the Lord would speak, you bring your heart where it needs to be with Him. You say yes to the Lord. Allow Him to direct you. Allow Him to have His way about you. Say yes. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Hear him calling out your name. He is here. You can touch him. You will never be the same. Surely the presence of of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angel wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. It's nice we'll continue to play the piano. If you would go ahead and be seated for baptism in just a moment. So this morning, uh, last week, we had uh, Lee that came forward, and we wanted to uh, publicly be able to share with you uh, from last week what God did in his heart. Let him hear. Uh, it is Lee Bitzer. Is that correct? And so after our baptism, we'll have him up front with uh, Tim and Rebecca and get a chance to come by and see uh, see him, get a chance to get to know him for just a minute. Just uh, God has moved him to our area. It's so good to have him. If you'd receive him into our church, would you say amen? amen. So it's great to have him apart. Um, a couple announcements for you this Saturday. Uh, Forge and also C4 have a game day with Ohio State and Michigan. I'm sure that'll be a lot of uh, going on there, maybe even a food fight. I'm not sure. But that'll be fun. Be there and be involved. Uh, another couple of little things. Ladies Christmas uh, party and uh, also the young ladies uh, be part of, of that coming up. And then decorating the church tomorrow for Christmas. Uh, 10 a.m. we'll be meeting. So don't forget about those couple things coming up. And then tonight at 5 o'clock. Everybody say 5 o'clock. It's different than uh, normal, right? So 5 o'clock. Be here. We'll be in the uh, Family Life Center in our time of uh, Thanksgiving together. So don't miss that. Baptism will be in just a moment. This is McKenna. We're certainly happy to have her in this water today telling her story of what she's done with Jesus. It's so a wonderful story. McKenna, have you received the Lord as your Savior? Yes. Is it your desire to live for the Lord, especially from this day forward? Yes. Amen. Turn this side, would you? Hold your arm for me. McKenna, I'm the profession of your faith in the Lord Jesus as my Savior. 
I baptize you, my sister, in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, Holy Ghost, amen. Very in likeness of Christ. I got you, baby. Just bend your knees. Likeness of his resurrection. Listen to me. Isn't that a wonderful picture? Wonderful story of someone receiving Jesus as their Savior. Wonderful, wonderful picture. And the Jesus of heaven died for her is honored. That's so wonderful. If you're glad to receive her into our good church, let me know with a heartfelt amen. Would you do that? Amen. amen. Would you stand with me, please? We'll be dismissed. I'm going to ask our mega praise teams, south and north, uh, if you go ahead and dismiss yourself right now before we pray so you can get in there for practice. So North and South team. Uh, also, uh, tonight, don't forget, 5 o'clock, as we already said. And then on your way out this morning, if you would, go ahead and turn in your Beyond Borders card, or you can turn that in uh, later this week or even this, this evening. But just uh, continue to pray for what God has you to do. All right, let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning uh, and how much we truly love all that you do in our life. God, you've changed us and changed our journey. And God, we just pray, God, that you give us the mind to look up and to look around, and uh, sometimes we have to look down to see where we're at, but God, help us to be able to get our bearing and be able to look up and around and see what you're doing and what you have for us. Be with our evening tonight, be with our afternoon. God, we just want to be a light for you in our community, so God, continue to help us with that next step um, of sharing your name with those around us. Thank you for Lee being a part, and also this young lady that was baptized today of our church family. Help them as they walk with you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.